Well, good morning, Revive Church. We're so excited that you're here to join us in worship, join us in, in word, join us in prayer. We just want to be here for you. Like, share, and comment the service right now. Whatever you're doing, just stop what you're doing. Like it a billion times. Share it. Get people the, the message of Jesus and hope because he is the reason why we do this, and he is the reason why we're here. Right, Kevin? Exactly right, Sean. I am pumped, totally pumped. Looking forward to this. I know you all are looking forward to this. And it's just, it's it's so much fun to be able to, to do this. I mean, we've said it a million times, and we're going to say it again. A hundred years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we wouldn't have been able to do this. We wouldn't have been able to give you this service in this quality, in, in this way, if we didn't have the technology that we had. So we just want to give a sh- big shout out to our tech department lead, and our leader, Miranda, Kimberly on on Facebook, just a shout out to them that they're doing amazing work, getting you this content. They work hard week in, week out, just to get you what you have uh, this Sunday morning. So thank you guys, and we're so excited for you guys and happy for you guys. And we pray a blessing upon you so it's returned to you. So Kevin, what's one thing that, that you've learned about doing these online services that has really excited you for what we're going to do in the future? One thing exciting about this whole thing is that we're able to uh, especially out on the worship end of it, um, we're able to. You're not seeing the uh, the, the mistakes that we could make, um, but that could be but, fun though. Th- those uh, those mistakes are sometimes fun. They are. They are in jazz and rock. They are fun. Um, and not gonna lie, sometimes some of that jazz sneaks sour. Um, but yeah, we have uh, we have a lot of fun still. Um, not as much fun as if everybody was in person, but Amen. it is what it is. Amen. Well, we're just, again, we're ready to get into worship. We're ready to get into the Word. So let's just pray ourselves into this service. Father, we just thank you for the ability to still worship you, to still love you, to still be with you in this time of quarantine, in this time of, of social distancing, Father. We're not going to be socially disconnected because we're connected to you. Father, we pray a blessing upon you. We pray their anointed ears to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And don't forget... Jesus is my friend.
notch here. Put your hands together. I don't care where you are. Anytime my heart turns from darkness to light. Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight. Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served. I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move, on the move today. Anytime in weakness someone falls upon their knees, or dares to speak the truth that sets men free. Anytime the choice is made to stand upon the word, I knew. I knew, I knew, I knew God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move in many mighty ways God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move, on the move today Yeah I see a generation Someone says, send me, here I go. I know, I know, I know, I know. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move in many mighty ways. Oh, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move. Thank you. 
lift our hands to you, Lord. We give you all the glory. All I can say is thank you, Jesus, for worship. Thank you, Father, for giving us something to express our love towards you. Thank you for our worship team for leading us that in that. And uh, we just want to connect with you. If you want to drop a comment below, like and share this, get get in touch with us. Email us at we are revived or, or revivechurchvt at gmail.com. Go to our website at wearerevived.church. But if you if those are uncomfortable for, for you, go ahead and text us. Text us at 802 802- Four 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 zero six five five. Get a pen and paper out. Get this written down. Pull out your phones and, and get it written out. 802-444-0655. If you need prayer, if you need just somebody to talk to, we have people standing by ready to talk with you and pray with you and get whatever you need. Give it, give it to God with you. And we just want to we just want to thank you for coming again. If you want, hey, invite somebody to, to view this service right now. Go ahead, share this, and then tag somebody in it. That's the way the gospel is being spread right now. There's churches all around the world. I mean, the church that I know of back back in Colorado, they had 155 people give their life to Christ on one Sunday just on an online service. Why can't that happen here? So we're we're believing God that we're going to see people come to Jesus in a grander way than he ever has before through this medium called technology. And we just we just share this, like this, get this word out because this is the hope of the world right here. Man, what a wonderful time we're in to give. Giving is something that, that doesn't need to be stopped in this time. It needs to be expanded. It needs to be grown. And, and us here at Revive, we're, we're trimming everything down to bare bones so that we can put 23% of our working budget into Benevolence Fund. If you have any needs, go to our website, wearerevive.church, and go down and click the Relief tab, and then just fill out the information there, and then we, we can get you some relief. But at this time, I think as Christians, we, we need to stand on the fundamental truth that we are called to give. Jesus, or God gave Jesus, he said he gave his only son. We just celebrated Resurrection Sunday. So what greater way to start off a new season in your life by giving? Maybe it's your first time ever watching. Don't feel obligated. But maybe God's telling you right now just to give your tithe. Give your time. Call that friend. Get them the materials they need. If you need something, even TP, we got some extra. I know we're not hoarders, but we got a little bit extra. So if you need, just reach out. Reach out to us if you need anything, and we're going to give during this time. We're going to give now more than ever because you've called us to give. So, Father, right now, we just thank you for, for the tithe. We thank you for the offering that you've blessed us with. Right now, as a church, we give that to you. We thank you for that, and we bless your name in that. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget to fill out that connection card. Every connection card gives $1 to a local mission. And we're here to change lives, reach the next generation, and impact the culture. And connecting with you in those connection cards are one way we can fulfill our mission here. So if you haven't, go to our website. Uh, In the comments below, we're going to have a link for giving and a link for the connection card if you have our app. Go download our app. Right now I'm wearing the Braid the Wild t-shirt of our kids' curriculum. Go on the app. Look up the kids' curriculum. You can give on the app. You can see previous messages on the app. And you can fill out the connection card on the app. So just go ahead, download our app. on It's on any, any store that you have, whether it be Apple or Android, doesn't matter. Go download that. So let's pray and let's get into the Word. Father, we thank you for Pastor Derek. We thank you for the word he's about to bring us. We thank you that it's your word for this season and this time. And we bless you during this time prayer. We have ears to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. What lies just below the surface? Below the surface, way down to the roots. That's where we are being made. Sure, we're already made, but we're not done yet. What is making us, crafting us, fashioning us? As followers of the risen Christ, His Word does. We don't make our beliefs. Our beliefs make us, remake us. 
Our beliefs and affirmations aren't academic pictures hanging on the walls of our mind. These convictions escape the confines of mere belief and explode into life change. And Jesus didn't intend for this to be a one-time work in us, but rather an ongoing transformation that invites others along, brings others into the family, welcomes others into sharing the reality of Christ and his call in our lives. See, this reality is not just for us. It multiplies. It gets passed between friends, family members, and strangers. What kind of growth is waiting just below the surface? Well, good morning, Revive Church. How's everybody doing out there today? I am so excited about preaching the Word of God today with you. We've been in this series entitled Grounded, and a couple months ago, my brother and I, we had gotten together and started praying about, God, what do you want us to teach about? What during this Easter season, all throughout April, what do you want us to talk about? And I believe he had given us the instruction to talk about Grounded. That's the series that we've been in, trying to help us find out and to stay planted and grounded grounded in what God has called us to be and where God has called us to be. Staying grounded in his love, staying grounded in his grace, staying grounded because when the tornadoes of life come, when the hurricanes of life come, we need something that is secure and that will stand the test of time. I've seen way too many people who have been all in for God and running for God and doing amazing things, serving, giving, growing, then all of a sudden a storm came that was more than they could bear. And they weren't grounded, and what had happened was that their house and their family were taken because of that storm. I wanted to make this series so that way we can stay grounded in God's Word, grounded in His grace, so that way when the storms and the winds and the things in life come, we have a way to stay where God has called us to stay. And the first week, Sean was talking about grounded in Gethsemane, giving us practical skills of what Jesus had to do and how He overcame the hardest point in his ministry. And then the week after that, which is last week, we were in Easter talking about planted, not buried. And that was a very fun one for me. I originally had heard it from Michael Todd, but I wanted to take the principles that he taught and put my own spin on it and have us see the burials in life that we've called a burial, but God wants them to turn it into a planting. And it's so important for us in this Easter season, like um, Elevation and uh, Brandon Lake, I believe his name is, just came out with a song called called Graves into Gardens. And that's exactly what that message last week was all about, how he turned a grave, a burial, into a garden, into a planting. And so what you see as a burial in your life, what happened five years ago, what happened 10 years ago, what happened yesterday that you think is a burial, COVID-19 does not have to be a burial. COVID-19 can be a planting for God to take you from one place, that pack of the seed, that place of security, plant you into the ground so you can bear much fruit. And today I'm excited about it. I'm truly excited. And I want you to do me a favor. I want you to look at your neighbor real intently. Look at them and say, hey neighbor, the sermon title today is Staying Planted. Now turn to your other neighbor, your second choice. Don't tell them they were your second choice. Turn to your neighbor and say, hey neighbor, we're going to be talking about Staying Planted. And to me, this is the most important portion we need to understand. Because if we're not going to stay planted, what good was it to be planted? Like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to just hold myself back in. I want to be able to get to the principles today because we need to realize that it's not in how you start. It's in how you finish. How many people have started something? saying they're going to go all the way, and then all of a sudden, halfway through, they just give up and they tear up the planting that had happened. I mean, what would happen to a tomato plant if you were going to move every week or move every month and you planted a tomato plant at one house, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I think it's better if it grew at my father's house, and you uprooted that tomato plant and you moved it over to your father's house and you planted it there, and oh, I think it's better if I... 
uproot it, and I'm going to move it to my brother's house. And you uproot it, you uproot it, and you bring it over, and you plant it at the other house. What happens every single time is you are ripping up the root structure that has been taken so long for it to acquire, and that plant is never, turn to your neighbor and say never, that plant is never going to be able to produce everything that it was called to produce because of so many times of being uprooted and planted somewhere else. Now, I want to ask you today, every person out there, not just ones that are in Revive Church or every person listening, like how many times have we allowed offense, have we allowed problems, have we allowed fear uproot us from one church and we got offended at the pastor, we got offended at a person, we got offended at a situation and you uprooted yourself and you're like, you know what, I'm better off going to this other house and plant myself into that house. And guess what, the same thing that you experience at this house, at this church, you're going to experience at the next house, at the next church because you never dealt with the problem. You only dealt with your surroundings. And so the thing, instead of you uproot, instead of you pulling the weeds that are around you, you decide to uproot and move somewhere else. Well, let me tell you this, there's weeds everywhere you go. You might feel like all your problems are in the job that you're at. You might feel that all your problems are in the surroundings that you have. When the biggest issue is you're just trying to uproot yourself and move, uproot yourself and move, but the same things in one garden are the same in the other. The same things at one church may have the same problems in another. The same thing at one job may have the same problems at another. It's how we handle them. It's how we're going to uproot the weeds rather than uproot our roots. And I wanted to get to us today because I feel like this is one of the most important things we need to discover is how to stay planted. How do I push through the painful times of my life to get to the promise on the other side? Like you've already planted yourself, excuse me, in the ground. You went from the seed packet of, of security. Now you're planted into the ground where you're learning how to die to yourself, die to what you think that you want, and die to the old life that you've come out of. And now you're entered into the ground, and now you're starting to turn into something new. There's a metamorphosis happening. That seed that you were in the packet has now become a root system. And so the seed turns into a system. And now the system is starting to branch out. But the more you find that you branch out, the more problems that you are encountered with. Now I live on a property and part of that property is a very big hill and it's a rock ledge, a slate ledge. But the greatest thing that I've admired about that piece of property are the amazing 100 year old trees, 80 year old trees that are surrounding that entire hillside. Now we cut a bunch of those trees down and when we cut those trees down and cleaned out underneath to make sure they didn't fall on the house, I had realized when I stripped back a bunch of the overburden of the, the property there, I had realized all of the root systems that go directly into the rock. Now, what if that seed had thought, I'm just a seed? How am I going to be able to produce roots that are strong enough to sustain a tree when I'm surrounded by a bunch of rock? Like so many times we could uproot ourselves from a place because it's not easy enough for us to imply or put in our roots. But these trees decided, you know what, just because this ground wasn't perfect ground, just because this wasn't the easiest place to put down my roots, I still decided, this tree says, I still decided I'm going to go through the rock. And once I get through the, the pressure, the through the problems, through the pain of pushing through this rock, I'm going to have the strongest root system anyone's ever seen because I'm using the rock to hold me up rather than just dirt. And so what initially started for the trees on my property as a painful procedure of pushing through the cracks in a rock and pushing the rock away and doing all of that work, now they're a sustainable tree that is going to hold up to any winds because they're founded on the rock. Now today we're going to be talking about how we can use nature that God has given us to produce ourselves to stay planted even if we're in the hardest soil possible. I mean, just think of it this way. When it comes to life in general, many of us have had many different situations. Maybe you've been hurt by a church. 
You've been hurt by your parents. You've been hurt by a family member. You've been hurt by a friend. And you have all these different things going on. The easiest thing for you to do and to want to do is to uproot and walk away. Now listen, your tree is never, your life is never going to flourish if you continue to cut out your root system. I'm not talking about just taking it and keeping your mouth shut and never standing up for yourself because that's important. That has its place. That has its time. There is a time where you need to cut some weeds out of your life. But what I'm trying to tell you is do not uproot everything just because it gets hard. Now, there are some times where you need to uproot and start fresh. I get that. But when that becomes a pattern in your life that when things get tough, you're just going to cut ties and leave, that is not what we need to be doing. There are some times where we need some pressure. We need some pain because in that, God is going to work something big out in your life. And staying planted is the most important thing that we need to do because if you don't go through some pain in your life, you're never going to be prepped for the next season. Can I give you some examples? Like this is the part where it comes to staying planted. Like David, listen, David was a young man and he was a shepherd. The youngest of his fathers, he was a shepherd. He wasn't even called worthy by his father, but he pulled in when Samuel was about to anoint one of his sons. And so as David was a shepherd, he was called in by Jesse and anointed by Samuel to be a king. Now, David had some choices to make here because he was just a boy in a sheep field. Now he's anointed to be king. See, he was anointed to be king, but he had to remain a shepherd. He stayed planted and allowed God to build the root system that was sustainable when he was king. Because David didn't have all the glory just when he got to the king. Like he was chased by Saul. He was mocked by his brothers. He had defeated Goliath. He had all of these things that had happened to him. Those were the times when he stayed planted and faithful in where he was. God used those times to pre prepare him when Absalom, his own son, wanted to take his throne. And so, so most of the time we'll go through pain by staying planted. But what happens is that brings God's promotion. When you stay planted in the middle of the problem, that's when God ushers in his promotion. Oh, that'll preach. That's not one of my points, but I'm going to tell you that again. When we stay planted in the middle of the problems, that's what ushers in God's promotion. Now write that down. Put that on your wall. Do whatever. It's not a point, but that's important for us to understand. Another one I want you to get is Peter. He was called to be the leader of the church, but yet he denied Jesus Christ three times in the middle of Christ's agony. You know what Peter did? He didn't cry because he messed up. He didn't cry because he was caught red-handed. He didn't cry and run away and get all depressed and, and quit the ministry and quit on God because he messed up. He didn't allow shame to hold him back. He decided that, you know what, I did mess up, but I stayed planted. And Peter became the greatest spokesperson at the day of Pentecost. You see, church, even if you have to wait, stay planted. Even if you mess up, stay planted. And just like Jesus, even if you're betrayed, stay planted. Don't allow COVID-19 to create havoc in your marriage. Don't allow crazy children to create panic and craziness in your mind. Don't allow losing your job to have you lose your trust in God. Don't let the situations of this world and people being people cause you to make a decision that is contrary to your character and cause you to become uprooted and walk away from the root system that God has established in your life to grow deep and to grow tall and to grow wide. You see, the greatest fruits and the greatest thing that, okay, when you look at a tree, Every part of what you see up is everything that you don't see. But what you don't see sustains what you do see. The root system of that tree has to be equal and greater to what is above it or else it would not sustain it. Many of us want to be this big, massive, famous tree that everybody sees producing leaves, producing um, records, producing businesses, producing so many different things. We want to be this tree. 
but we're not willing to stay planted and grow the root systems that's needed to be able to sustain the promotion. And today I want to talk about the many different ways that we can look at the Word of God to stay planted. Because let me tell you this, you're going to have these thoughts at night to quit. You're going to have these thoughts at night to commit suicide. You're going to have these thoughts that come in and try to think that you're insecure, you're inadequate, you can't do it. Or you're going to have these voices tell you that it's better if you don't go to church because you're such a sinner. Or it's better if you don't go to church because someone you don't like is at church. Let me tell you this. The more you surround yourself with people that you don't prefer or you don't like, the greater God can work your character. They're called sandpaper people for a reason. They rub the rough edges off of you. And let me tell you, if we surround ourselves just by people who think the way that we think and talk the way that we talk and understand the, we, the way that we understand, we live a very sheltered life. And so I would encourage you, stay planted even in the midst of an uncertain time, an uncertain church, an uncertain um, relationship. Stay planted. Stay planted. I'm not talking about, listen, don't misunderstand me. If you're a woman who is um, dating a guy who's just a knucklehead, he doesn't care about you, all he wants is what you can give him and all this kind of a stuff, you can break that tie. But if you're married, I encourage you, stay planted. I know way too many relationships that end too soon. But I also know a lot of relationships that when they said till death do us part, they meant it. And even though they went through hell uh, through year 10 to year 20, they're on year 30 now and they love each other more than ever. Just because you're going through a hard time now doesn't mean it's not going to end. Through your faith and through you staying planted, there is victory on the other side. Just don't give up. And today I wanted to read to you from a scripture in Ephesians chapter 6. And many of us know this as the whole armor of God. And I wanted to read this because it's so important for us to see the importance of the armor that God gives us because it's not something that we can see. It is a sustainable root system that guards our heart and soul against every attack of the enemy. Because sometimes in our marriage, it's, what, it's in our head that gives us the greatest problems. It's what's in our minds that give us the greatest problems. It's the fear that we hold within that gives us the greatest problems. And so these are our are, are armors that God gives us to attack anything spiritual that comes against his word. And so I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 20. And this is in the New Living Translation. It says this, a final word. Be strong in the Lord and in, the mighty, in his mighty power. Get that? Be strong in the Lord, in His mighty power, not in yours. Guys, listen. You don't have to give yourself a motivational talk every single morning to feel like you're good enough. Rely on God's strength and not your own. Just because you feel inadequate and you can't do it and you're frustrated and you're angry and you're in fear and you don't know this and you don't know that and you're not able to add up for anybody here, anybody there, and so you feel so disconnected with reality, you're trying to operate in your own strength. Listen, do what you can do and trust God to fill the rest. Do what you can do as a husband, as a dad, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a loved one, as a, as a son, as a, everything. Just do what you can and let God fill in the rest. Okay? And so this is the thing. It says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Can I teach you real quick? When it comes to problems in our relationships with people, that is the strategy of the devil against you to divide you against that person. The Bible says it's not good for man to be alone, and so God wills for us to be together in harmony and love and in grace. But what the devil is trying to do is he is sending false perceptions. He is sending false accusations. He's sen sending hatred and fear and anxiety to try and cripple your relationships with the ones that should be the strongest. 
And this is why the divorce rate in the church and outside of the church is so high. It's because the devil is using things to try and attack marriage as the first institution that God set up. And so this is where I want you to understand, it's not a fight against flesh and blood. You're not fighting your wife. You're not fighting your husband. You're not fighting your kids. You're not fighting your parents. You're not fighting your cousins. You're not fighting your aunts and uncles. You're fighting against an evil devil who wants to bring evil on your life. And if you're able to be able to see that, you're not going to have fear, anxiety, hatred, or anything against the person who's hurt you. You're going to have compassion just like Jesus had compassion. Because Jesus was able to see the other side of the coin. He was able to see beyond the faces and beyond the accusations. That's why he was able to to say, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing in the middle of them nailing him to the cross. That's why Jesus, when he just got the word that John the Baptist, his cousin, was killed, he was able to turn and see a multitude and have compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus didn't get into self-pride and cry and wonder who's going to comfort me because he knew there was someone on his side that was greater. He knew that there was people in front of him that needed a pastor, that needed a shepherd, that needed some compassion. And Jesus walked in compassion because he saw the other side. And so when it comes to you getting upset at people, we need to realize it's not people that are our problem. It's the enemy using people to get under our skin. And now we're placing blame on the wrong person. And in a sense, you guys have seen the movies, you've seen the people that after 10 years or 15 years in prison, now they look back into the case and they found out that they weren't the murderer, it was somebody else. But yet they were falsely accused and they were sentenced because of something what somebody else did. Listen, that person that you're holding in the jail of your mind, they're actually innocent and the devil is guilty. They're actually innocent and your own insecurity is guilty. And so if you, I want you to do this, go to God in prayer with this. Like if you have somebody on your mind, go to God in prayer over this because the only reason that's keeping you from being planted is the very jail that you're holding yourself in and you're blaming it on people when it's truly the devil. And so there is an unseen world that we're fighting against. And we need to know that or else we're not going to have the right strategy to fight the enemy. Verse 13 says this, Therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Put on all the armor. Resist. Put on all the armor. Resist. Turn to your neighbor and say, put on the armor. Put on the armor. Put on the armor. Put in the comments below. Put on the armor. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, let's resist. Let's resist. Let's resist. Then after the battle, you will stand, you will still be, sorry, then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. Now we're getting into the armor now. Stand your ground by putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up that shield of faith. To stop the fiery arrows of the devil and put on salvation as your helmet. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and persist in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And pray for me too. Pray for me, Paul says. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Turn to your neighbor and say, Pray for me. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious mysterious plans that the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. I'm in chains now, still preaching this message as God's ambassador. So pray that I keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. Man, the Apostle Paul is writing this epistle to the church at Ephesus talking about putting on the full armor of God, talking about how we don't weapon or we don't have a warfare against people. It's against principalities of the devil, principalities of the air that are evil. The devil wants to divide. God wants to join. And he's in chains in the middle of writing an epistle of encouragement. This man, the Apostle Paul, was able to write an amazing account of God's word in the middle of his hardest and tragic, most tragic time. See, this is the part when we learn, just like Paul, to stay planted. 
that even though I'm going through hell, I am planted hard enough, I am planted long enough, I have established the root system that even when I'm going through hell, I can still produce and give to other people. Last week I had talked about you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. And that that tree produces shade. That tree produces a house for the birds of the air. That tree produces fruit. That tree produces so many benefits for others. Not for itself, but for others. And only and only that will happen when you stay planted. Now I want to explain real quick the body armor of God. The first one was this belt of truth. You see, the only way to hold a belt, you know a belt, it's to hold up your pants. Back in the day, it was used to hold up a sword or hold your sword or to hold other equipment and to also hold up your pants. And so the only way you're going to be able to hold yourself up is with the truth of God's word. The only way you're going to be able to understand and to walk and to be able to have everything covered is to have the truth. So the devil works in a lie, but God works in the truth. You see, this is the thing. Anything that's in darkness, anything that is hidden, anything that is kept from somebody, like a hidden secret on the inside of you, that's when the devil can work it. But when you add the truth of God to it, get it out, confess your sins, repent your sins to somebody else, and walk with someone through it, you bring that fear, you bring that lie into the light, and you're going to be able to expose truth to the lie and kill the lie that's within you. Say this, like you would, you would be able, like you've always been born in poverty, and so the lie is I'm always going to be poor. Like you, you've you seen everybody in your life be addicted to alcohol and so by that lie you feel like you're going to be addicted or your dad died of a heart attack when you're 50 and your granddad dad died when he was 40 of a heart attack and so the lie that you might believe and you might be susceptible to is that the lie is I'm not going to last that long. And so what happens is, is we have all of these lies that have been said to us in our life. You're inadequate. You're not good enough. You're never going to be enough. You're never going to have kids. You're never going to be cured of cancer. All of these things that are lies that are spoken over us become, uh, 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 I would say, strongholds. But the only way to overcome a lie is with the truth. The truth of God's word says, I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. And I am behind in no good thing. This is the part we need to understand. To overcome a lie, you need to expose it with the truth. Because what happens is, is we believe these lies so much, and we've believed them for so long, we think they are truth. But when we get into the Word of God and see what He says about us, only and only that will be, be, be able, that truth will be able to expose the lies of the enemies over us. Number two, the body armor of God's righteousness. This is truth. This is so important. When we talk about God's righteousness, he's talking about the body armor of God's righteousness because it's righteousness that covers us. Like, it's not in what you've done. It's not in what you do. It's not in how much time you spend with God. The, everything that protects you from the arrows of the enemy, from the attacks of the enemy, is the righteousness of God in you. The Bible talks about we are seated in heavenly places in Christ, with Christ. When we give our life to Jesus, God doesn't see you separate from Jesus anymore. Like, he sees you as righteous as Jesus is. Like, he is the one who gave us this gift of righteousness. And so that righteousness should be on the forefront of our mind because the devil wants to tell you how unrighteous you are. And granted, there's things that we do that are totally unrighteous. But again, it is grace for a reason. It is unmerited, undeserved favor of God. And so he gives us righteousness. We're supposed to put that righteousness on. And the more conscious you are of his righteousness, the more you will be righteous in your actions without even trying. Listen, so many people try to overcome the addiction to pornography, the addiction to alcohol, the addiction to drugs, the addiction to insecurity, the addiction to going to social media. The, the, we try and do it by self-denial. Like if I can deny it long enough, I'm going to be set free. If I can deny it long enough and say no to it long enough, I'm going to be okay. If I can just speak it enough, it's going to be okay. But if what you're speaking doesn't line up with what you're believing... You may be sober for six months. The biggest thing you need to do is believe 
that I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I was walking with an individual that I love very dearly about a, a thing that I had. And I was continuing to like, I'm not doing it, but I'm thinking it. I'm not doing it, but I've got this thing in my mind that just won't shut up. It won't let me go. And this is what he told me. He's just like, you're dead to it. You're dead to it. Like we don't go to a grave and they're craving a drink or they're craving to look at something online. They're not. So we need to see these addictions that we've had in the past as we're dead to it. Like there's no temptation when you're dead to it. And the only way that you're dead to it is when you're alive to God in Christ. So when we give our life to Jesus, we don't just give him the trust that we have to be Savior. Would we make him Lord and truly believe that we're righteous because he made us righteous, we will become alive to that and dead to the other stuff. When we remain conscious of what Jesus has done for us, the righteousness we have in him, all of these other temptations just become, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need it. I don't want it. And that's being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Sorry, I'm getting off my notes here, but I don't believe that that's going to help you. Number three, the shoes of God's peace. That means everywhere you go, your feet bring you places, right? Everywhere you go, you bring God's peace. You carry God's peace. You carry his grace. You carry this presence of peace. This emotion that when you walk into the room, people are like, Because you know the one who's inside of you. That's an armor that we can't live without. Now we've got this shield of faith, this thing that we've got on our arm that holds up and, and, and absorbs every blow of the enemy's sword and every blow of his arrows. That's faith. That belief, that's like you are righteous and your faith believes it. Your faith holds on to the promises that Jesus Christ died for your sins and he's made you righteous. That's faith. The Bible says it's by grace you have been saved through faith, through faith. And so grace provides, faith obtains. Grace Jesus provided. God is grace. God gave us grace. But it is through faith that we believe in that grace and have access to what he's given us. And so it's the shield that holds it up saying, no, I'm not going to believe that lie, devil. I'm not going to believe that lie of inadequacies. I'm not going to believe that lie of this and that. You have faith. Don't believe it. Number three, it's the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Now, why is salvation our helmet? <clears throat> like, we've got righteousness. we got peace. we got faith. But why is salvation? Because your mind is what, ha what you do up here is what creates a stronghold in here. And all of the issues of life come from in here. And so what you think on, if you think it long enough, you will believe it in your heart. And that belief system will create a pattern that is either for God's word and for what he has for you or contrary to it. And so the reason why we have to put on the helmet of salvation is we need to surround ourselves and remind ourselves that we've been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. <clears throat> not in how I woke up feeling, not in how good I had good sleep last night, how, not in how well my kids act or how less overwhelmed I am or how more overwhelmed I am. No, the only way that we can think through life is the helmet of salvation surrounding ourselves with thoughts of God's grace and love on our lives. No matter how bad of a day that you've had, you're still saved. You still believe in Jesus. And that, my friends, is the gospel truth. And the last one is very important. What I just showed you were all defense mechanisms, the belt of truth, the body armor of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and then the last one is the offensive weapon, is the sword of the Spirit. Now, I've never jousted or swung a sword before in my life, but I will tell you is this. I've watched a lot of movies on it. I'm an expert on it now. <laughs> the sword of the Spirit is very important because it represents the Word of God. It represents the spirit of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. And so all the other weapons are meant to defend. This one is meant to attack. And so anytime you have something or some spirit coming against you, you need to attack it with the sword of the spirit, with God's word, with his truth, with his righteousness, with his faith. 
And that is the only way you're going to overcome and remain to overcome and stay planted. So put on the armor, swing the sword of the Spirit, and allow God's Word to keep you planted. Now I have three quick things to finish this up for you. And this portion is extremely important. My main points to you are three things. These are the most important things that you need to understand. Because when it comes to walking and staying planted in God's word, staying planted in his grace, staying planted in this thing called faith in Jesus, and be able to produce much fruit, we need to stay planted. But how you do that is these three things. Turn to your neighbor and say this. Hey, neighbor, get, give, repeat. Turn to your other neighbor, write it in the comments section below. Say, hey, neighbor, get, give, repeat. Say it again. Get, give, repeat. Say it again. Get, give, repeat. Repeat. You see, this is what we have to understand. When we get righteousness and a revelation of God's word, we need to be willing to give it. And when we give it, we're going to be able to go back and get some more. And then we're going to be able to go and give some more, then get some more, then give some more, and get some more, and give some more, get some more, and give some more. If you're all about getting, that will create a selfish mindset where you're all about give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. If you're all about giving to somebody else, I'm not talking about just finances here. I'm talking about every aspect of our life. If we're going to always want to just give, you're going to deplete the very assets that you have, burn out, and, re- and then you're going to unplant yourself and move to somewhere else where you feel like you can get more. But if you don't have a steady balance of getting and giving, getting and giving, getting and giving. I'm talking about you get grace from God, you give grace to others. You get love from God, you give love to others. You get money from this place, you give money to another place. And you get and you give and you get and you give. A getting too much getting will cause to be a reservoir and that reservoir will dry up. Too much giving and your river that is constantly pushing will end up drying up. But if you're constantly getting from God and constantly giving to other people, giving to yourself because you can't leave yourself out of it, I promise you this, if you complete if you complete that and you repeat that, I can guarantee you God's going to show up and you're going to find out that when you get, it feels good. But when you give, it feels even more good. And you go back to the well and you say, God, I need this. I'm praying for this. Please give me this. And you get that from him. And then you turn and you give it back to somebody else. And you get some counsel and some life coaching over here. And you turn and you can give that to somebody else. You're going to see the amazing, 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 amazing fruit you've never seen before. But here's the disclaimer. It may not happen overnight. You may not feel it tomorrow, but I can guarantee you if you continually get from God and continually give to others and you repeat that over and over and over and over again, let me tell you this, you're going to stay planted. Put in this example, if you go to a church and you're all about, I'm going to get from this church, get from this church, get from this church, get from this church, the minute you stop getting from that church and you start, it gets old to you, you're going to uproot and move somewhere else. Listen up. If you're all about going to a church and you're all about giving and giving and giving. So many people preach, you just got to give, got to give, got to give. It's great. It's wonderful. But all that you're going to do is give and give and give. That's unhealthy because when you dry up and burn out, you're going to blame the church for the pain that you're in when it was your fault for not getting enough to give. Oh, I'm preaching it. I'm preaching it today. Because I've gotten myself in seasons where I've wanted to quit and I've wanted to give up on everything because I never took the time to spend it and have it with God. And so in this season, you may feel crazy. You may feel like you don't have the time. But if we're not going to take the time and give that to Jesus, we're not getting. And if we're not getting and we're giving too much, you're going to burn out anyway. And so friends, if you want to end like David who got anointed to be king and ended up becoming king, Or like Peter, who is called to be the pivotal leader of the church and failed and came back. Or if you want to walk in Christ's character and Christ's example, where he was able to stay faithful even in the midst of a crucifixion. The answer is to get, give, repeat. Church, this is what staying planted is all about. Now today, 
my next step for you before I pray over you is this. Download the YouVersion Bible app. Download it, download it, download it. It's an app on your phone. There's Bible plans on it. There's so many things on this Bible plan that can be an asset to you. You can go through Bible plans together. You can go through Bible plans with a friend by yourself. You can read through the Word of God. It reads to you. If you have a hard time comprehending when you just read it, have it read to you while you're looking at it, you will understand so much more. That's what I do. And then what I would encourage you, once you download the U version Bible app, Y-O-U version Bible app, then I want you to download some Bible plans about the armor of God. There's so many different ones. If you have questions about salvation, search for Bible plans about salvation, about um, repentance, about all of these different aspects. If you have questions, start with the Bible plan and allow God's Word to reveal truth to you so you can expel any lie of the enemy over your life. And so with that being said, I want to extend an invitation for every person out there watching this archived or live right now. If you feel like your life has not been where you believe it needs to be, and you've come to a point, a breaking point, where you just want to give up, or you've never, ever tried or come to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day for you to do that. The Bible says the only way for you to escape hell and to get into heaven when we die is through Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is what this whole message is all about. Staying planted is about believing that you've been made righteous, not by how you've acted. Let me tell you, even when I was a Christian, I was messed up. Like I got saved when I was eight, but I was really messed up and I rededicated when I was 16. And even though I continued to mess up going in and even today, I know and I believe that it's not in what I've done that causes me to be righteous. It's in what Jesus has done for me. And if you would like to receive the freedom in that, the forgiveness of that, and the salvation in that, I want you to pray this prayer after me, out loud or in your heart. And then I want to hear from you. And I want to help you walk this life with Christ out so you can not only be planted, but remain planted. And so for all those coming back to God, or you would like to give your heart to Jesus for the first time, pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I've tried it my way, but it never worked out. I've gone to the right, and I've gone to the left, but today I have found the answer that I've been looking for, and His name is Jesus. Right now I confess that Jesus Christ he is Lord of my life. He is the Son of God, and He died on the cross for my sin, my pain, my forgiveness, and my righteousness. I thank You, Father, for washing me, cleansing me, and creating in me a pure heart that loves You and loves myself. I thank You now Jesus is Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, come on, let's just give it up for every person who just rededicated their life to Christ and dedicated their life to Christ to Him for the first time on behalf of Revive Church and the kingdom of God. I wanted to be the first to tell you, welcome to the family. Now, don't just sit there and have a party all to yourself. I want to hear about it. We've got people standing by, and I want you to do me a favor. Get out your phones. I want you to text Jesus is my Savior or text just say, I just gave my life to Christ, whatever it is. I just rededicated my life to Christ. I want you to text that to 802-444-0655. 802-444-0655. Let us know. A text message is a simple, easy way to get connected. We want to help walk with you. We want to be there for you. And I'm so excited for you. I pray a blessing upon you and your family. And I am so thankful for everything that he has done in and through your life. I love you, church. I miss you, church. And guess what? I'll see you next week or tomorrow during our midday motivation. Love you guys. Have a great day. How about that word? That was amazing. Pastor Derek really gave us an awesome word. Amen. Um, Amen. It's just... 
the the wisdom that he gets from from the scripture and the wisdom that that he gives us from what he's get gotten from God is amazing and we're we're just honored to be able to hear what God has to say through him aren't we Kevin we are we are we are but- Hey, don't rem- just remember, comment, like, share just before this is over with. Go ahead, share it for a future reference so that you can know that it's on your page. I can go back and watch it. And if you would like to reach out to us, don't forget our number, 802-444-0655. 802-444-0655. We have people standing by ready to co- ready to text you, ready to connect with you prayers any prayers you may have any questions you may have we're here to help you we're here to serve you and just remember don't forget to give to the kingdom because this ministry is moving forward we're doing big things so that we can help you so we can help our community so we can spread the gospel so we can change lives reach the next generation and what impact a culture for jesus and that's right that's right that's our mission that's what we're going for and that's what we're doing every single week Thank you guys for joining us. Anything you'd like to say, Kevin? Yes, don't forget, Pastor Derek does his mid uh, midday motivation. Motivation. Midday motivation. Those are phenomenal. Yes, I yes. recommend them. Definitely, it'll help you through this time to connect not only with everybody but with Him and to to hear what God is saying now and in this time. It's important that we stay connected, and that's a great way to connect. It's almost like a meetup during the middle of the middle of the day where you can comment with your friends and and connect with your friends online and we're just we're happy that Derek's doing those we're we're blessed that Derek keeps doing those and so just don't forget about those and just continue to be the connection continue to be the church cuz that's what we're called to do amen well thank you for joining us have a great week we cannot wait to see you next week amen <laughs>